you. Thank you, Carla. It, uh, from our group, we had a really amazing, I get insights that people were sharing. And uh, just the language that triggered, just as you're speaking now, I remember when my niece was quite young and my mum said to her, stop being bossy. And my sister and I said at the same time, no, she's demonstrating leadership skills. And so, you know, it's, it's our own language. So uh, Catherine shared that, you know, about stepping into the room and, and really feeling like you're credible. You know, it's, it's being credible in that space and, uh, and making sure that there's a real sense of presence. Uh, from Craig, he'd never really thought about it and he's in recruitment. So his ability to influence is quite huge. And one of the things, if any of you are young enough to remember your HSC, you all were a number. And so I put to you, Craig, what would it mean if every person who came as a recruit or a you know, potential employee had a number, were given a code, a number without name, without gender, and you were just looking at the skills, how would that then create a difference in, uh, in opinion and, and removing any unconscious bias? So, you know, we do it in HSC and we don't even think about it. Could we then consider that as an option in, uh, in recruitment? I'm putting that challenge on the table for you, Craig, because you were the one who sort of said, you know, hadn't really thought about it. Uh, the um, defining the problem, you know, that Karen had suggested was really the thing about, you know, having a voice and in a boardroom where she sat, it was really like a pub room because she was the only person, you know, as a female in the boardroom. And came up, if everyone would like to write down the word together, please, if you just make a pen there or just type it together, I'd like you to put a line after the two, a line after the get, and you're left with to get her. And so how do you build an ally, you know, to get her to that same playing field or to make the playing field much easier? And the same thing we can do with lots of other words and the other one that sprang to my mind when Karen shared that was the word confront, is having the confidence, so if you've got con, having the confidence to front up. And so how do we have confidence to get her or how do we have confidence together? So that was a really great uh, insight as well. For Neil, who was um, involved in the Financial Planning Association and CEO of that, we were talking about financial literacy and one of the ways that he could make a difference was actually getting involved in building some of the financial literacy. I know when, you know, I've been working with some of the people incarcerated and that was a big challenge for them. So we've put that on the table for him to start to think about what are some of the financial literacy that could be involved. And for Lauren, who uh, beamed in from the USA in Carolina, thank you, and doing much the same thing over there with uh, Dress for Success and having her clients and volunteers be more aligned or more connected and associated with some of the people who have been incarcerated and having them share some of their stories to uh, actually realise that. Sorry, and Denise, we've also got Martin to go, a few more go people to go. Yes, yes. And uh, Elena, uh, Elena, who was sharing around the way that she could um, contribute and perhaps working in with Elena around her, her company to look at some of those uh, people to have it working with her, so which was very exciting. So, Martin, thank you. 